glad you're here today. Glad you've come to share in this service. Small group meets tomorrow evening. Wednesday evening at 7, we'll have Bible study. And if you're interested in knowing what we're going to do Wednesday night, we're going to be looking at Psalms 103, among some other things that we're going to do. So keep that in mind. Uh, what a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Let's go to him in prayer this morning. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as we bow in your presence, we just want to pause, Lord, to tell you that we love you this morning. And Lord, we just pray, as we gather this morning in your name, to praise and to worship your holy name, Lord, that your spirit might come and touch each heart and each life that's present. Bless in everything that is said and done, that it might lift up praise and glorify the wonderful name of Jesus. For it's his name we pray. Amen. Here. Stand with me. Now, that first part on that uh, song, that first moment was a courtesy of a senior moment. That last part, I don't have any explanation for that. <laughs>
be seated. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm glad that you are all here. You chose to be here rather than somewhere else. It's going to be one today. You know, we've been studying Revelation. Last week we talked about the heat wave that's coming. Faith and I walked the wall on Friday. They said, oh my goodness, it's terrible. I said, this ain't nothing. It's going to be a lot worse, isn't it? And we were so proud of you, Rose Hill. Yes, last Sunday, you guys for Faith Promise committed $16,872. Amen. That is more to my recall than ever, even when we had over 100 people. So thank you for your commitment. Amen. And it got good. All the time. Blushers, would you come and we worship the Lord with this child's offering? <coughs> Would you ask the Lord's blessings? Lord, we are thankful for this beautiful day that you're blessing us with. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you uh, put upon us. And now we just thank you for this blessing that we have to give back to you, Lord, how you blessed us.
the two sons and so forth, but they didn't really understand what he was saying. Uh, I like what uh, Matthew 26, 39 said. He went to a little further and fell down <coughs> and prayed, saying, talking to his father, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Never uh, to last, not my will, but your will be done. He, he was reaffirming his mission and his will to do God's will. That, you know, sometimes we need that reaffirming to our commitment to God, too. Okay? And the, the, the bread was representative of his body. A lot of times, I really don't think that the disciples really understood what Jesus was speaking of. But I like what Paul had to say to when they fully understood this. Now Paul was the main writer of the New Testament, and he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, this Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. What uh, Jesus was trying to teach this woman of Zebedee's, the two sons, James and John, was to be servant. Who wanted to be great among them had to be servant of all. I had to be Lord of all and we had to be servant of all. Servanthood. To present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the living God, which is our reasonable service. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove it's that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Jesus was set, uh, trying to accept and to do his Heavenly Father's will. Can you and I do that ourselves? Ask and seek God's will, not our own will? If that is his prayer, for not to take the cup, to fulfill the cup, to fulfill his mission. What was Jesus' mission? To be crucified, to die. The realization of it wasn't there. But Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives with me. And that life which I now live, I live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I love Paul's words. He really affirmed what Jesus' message was. But we need to do the same thing today. To present our bodies a living sacrifice, and to present ourselves as a servant. Uh, in this scripture, uh, Addressing this woman and these two sons, Jesus was reaffirming that if you want to be to my right or left, you must be servant of all. You have to serve others. How did Jesus do this? Do y'all remember the illustration he gave about washing the feet? And he washed the he kneeled down before them and washed their feet. And then after Peter was he didn't want to be his feet to be washed at all. But he did have his feet washed, and after he realized what Jesus really was trying to portray to him, he said, I want my hands and my feet, my, my face all washed too, not just my feet. But can we do the same thing for today? Can we present our bodies and realize that Jesus died for all of us? Uh, one of the illustrations I learned as a teenager, and I thought it was real funny back, back then, but it, the evangelist was talking about uh, turning all, all on the altar where one person brought the all detergent. Remember the all detergent? Put it the all on the altar. Jesus paid it all, all to them all. He left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. He wants our all. He wants to wash his uh, heart, mind, and strength. When Jesus healed someone, he healed the mind, body, spirit. He didn't halfway do it. He healed the whole body. It wasn't just spiritual. It wasn't just physical. It's mentally. He made them whole. W-H-O-L-E. He made them whole. Mm -hmm. He wants us to do the same thing. To put our faith and trust in Him. And put our all into God's hands. Uh, uh, now he... They don't... I don't think really... The disciples, when Jesus, they were, when Jesus was telling all this, really realized it then. But once the crucifixion, uh, Jesus had died, I think they really realized what had happened. In fact, P. 
dear who was so felt so unworthy he insisted on him so being crucified upside down. But we need to learn servanthood and to place everything in God's hands. But my God shall supply all you need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We learn and to present our bodies and to present uh, ourselves, our whole will to God. I think God can use us. And I think the main focus of this scripture is God gave his all. And that he gave us the perfect example that we need to do our very best. And uh, I like what it said, that they are all covered by the blood. My sins were all covered by the blood. My iniquity so fast have been fallen out at last. They are all covered by the blood. And I love all this old stuff, and that's why I wanted to uh, do the, the new covenant. God, that Jesus wanted uh, us to recognize and to put our whole dependence on Him. Now, we can't depend on uh, the government. Our family and friends are all times or fellows or human. But if we put our faith and trust in our total dependence on God and be transformed by the renewing of our mind, we should be able to overcome, endure, and God will not leave us nor forsake us. What what Jesus experienced on the cross and through cru crucifixion is for all mankind, not just for uh, not just you and I, but all of us. Uh, I would uh, like to pray and those that I ask to come serve as for communion. And one of the scriptures that, that I recall when I, I do when I'm about to receive communion is Psalm 139, 23, and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, lead me in the way everlasting. I pray these scriptures, it's not just that I think about it. I actually pray, I beseech you, work for brother, by the mercy of God. I, these are my prayers. In Galatians 2.20, I'm a crucified with Christ. I'm really praying for my whole heart being to be presented to God as a living faith sacrifice. So... Those that I come, have asked to come to serve communion, we come forth. And you don't have to be a member of church, this church to accept communion. Because we have And the Lord ordained this holy sacrament. He commanded his disciples to partake of the bread and wine, emblems of his broken body and shed blood. This is his table. The feast is for his disciples. Let all those who have with true repentance forsaken their sins and have believed in Christ unto salvation draw near and take these emblems by faith and to partake of this life of Jesus Christ. Your soul's comfort and joy. Let us remember it is the more of the death and passion of our Lord, also a token of his him coming again. Let us not forsake that we are one and at one table with the Lord. Come forward if you would like to have communion.